Thank you for your prayers and support. Everybody's back and healthy, and uh, we're excited about this year. Are you excited about 2022? Yes. It's a quick poll. Who, who gets excited about the new year? Man, I love the new year. I just like new starts to things. So for some reason, the beginning of the year always feels like yeah. <laughs> we're taking over the world. And inevitably, a few weeks into that, you know, we all calm down a little bit and we reality sets back in. But listen, there's no reason, though, that this cannot be a great year for your life. There's no reason. A lot of times the, the, the impact of a year um, has less to do with the circumstances surrounding us and more with the mindset that we have on our growth and prioritizing the things in our life that matter the most. Um, and so uh, my hope throughout this series is to really help you get into a mindset that is going to help you have an amazing year. Um, we're going to begin today uh, 21 days of, of fasting. Uh, if you tuned in with us last week, I talked a little bit about this, and I would encourage you to participate in this. And now, we're not fasting in the traditional sense. The biblical uh, idea of fasting is to deny yourself food for a certain period of time. Um, but fasting isn't just about a diet. Fasting uh, is about drawing closer to God. And what I have seen and what I've experienced throughout my life and leadership and time with people is that the thing typically that keeps people uh, growing with God and getting closer to God are the things that distract them. And so our encouragement over the next 21 days is to eliminate one or two of the main distractions in your life. Set it aside for 21 days. Maybe that's social media. Maybe it's uh, the computer. Maybe it's texting and emailing. Maybe it's um, Maybe it is something that has to do with food. Maybe it's fast food for 21 days. Whatever that is, that you feel a conviction, man, this has control of my life. This is preventing me. Maybe it's a toxic relationship. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's not even a toxic relationship. Maybe it's a friendship that isn't helping to advance you. You need to take 21 days away to analyze over the next 21 days, I want to challenge you to set something aside that is a major distraction in your life and to replace that, supplement that with something that is going to draw you closer to God. And on the other side of this 21 days, I believe that you're going to be deepened. Uh, we've got some resources that we want to help you with over this 21 day period. If you go to our website, at the top of the website, trademark.church, there's a little banner that talks about this new series. Click that banner, and if you scroll down on the page, there's some resources that we've put up there that we believe will help you uh, on this 21-day journey. I wanna highlight a few of those. There's two books um, that you could purchase. Uh, the Amazon link is on there. One of them is called Live No Lies by John Mark Comer. Uh, this book is, uh, I'm in the middle of it right now. It is phenomenal. It will impact you greatly. Uh, there's a um, ancient book, if you will, not really ancient, but a uh, long, long time ago, um, called The Imitations of Christ. Uh, next to the Bible, many argue that it is the most significant piece of uh, literature to help the follower of Christ on this journey. It's uh, the one that I've posted is really a daily uh, reading that you can jump into, the imitations of Christ, what it means to become more like Jesus. Phenomenal resource. There's uh, uh, the Bible app. We posted a couple plans, 21-day plans, so you can access the Bible app and simply each day get into a little bit of God's word and spend some time with God. And then there's a new app out that I wanna highlight called uh, Glorify. And on uh, this app, it, it's an amazing resource. There is a quote of the day, there's scripture. Uh, it'll read scripture to you in this very like, you can pick different voices. Very soothing, there's meditation moments. It's called Glorify, um, and we've actually put a code up there, so if you want the plus version that gives you a lot of access to other resources within the app, there's a code on there that you can use, and actually, uh, when you use that code to upgrade to the, to the um, uh, plus version of 
this app, the uh, resources actually go to one of our mission partners called Free Church Media that actually supplies resources for thousands of churches uh, all over the world. And so um, you can help support that. So anyways, there's some things on there. There's a couple worship playlists as well. So we want to help you on this 21-day journey of drawing closer to God. So you're not going to see any social media posting from uh, our church. You're not going to see anything from from me, so we're actually eliminating some things that we find to be a distraction with the intention of getting closer to God. Uh, Because here's the truth, most people will never get to the place that God has for them because they're too distracted, excuse me, by the things around them. Deep down, we all desire to get to where God wants us to be, but most people do not get to the place that God desires them to be because they are too distracted by everything around them. I'm praying and I'm believing that over the next 21 days, um, and this is my prayer for you, I pray for our church. There's many people um, on our leadership team and staff that pray for our church. Uh, My prayer specifically for you over these next 21 days is that you would be deepened like never before in your relationship with Jesus. Because as you are deepened, as you get to know who God truly is, um, it is amazing to experience how your life begins to unfold. I've been on a journey you know, for, for many years now. I surrendered my life to Jesus when I was 23 years old. I'm now 40. Um, it has been, as I reflect back, because everything is hindsight, right? You don't necessarily feel change, you don't necessarily feel growth, you don't necessarily, but as you look back on the course of your life, the seasons where I've been the most deepened in my time with God, intentional time with being with my creator, you look back and you just see what God has done. And so my prayer for you over these next 21 days is that you would draw closer to Jesus than you ever have before. If you've got your Bibles today, we're going to jump into the book of Romans. We're going to be in Romans chapter 12, two very short verses. You may be familiar with them. We'll read them in just a moment. Uh, The book of Romans was written by the Apostle Paul. If you don't know anything about the Apostle Paul, I'll give you just a cliff notes version. He was uh, persecuting the church. He wanted nothing to do with Jesus, and he was imprisoning Christians. Uh, Some believe Christians were even being killed at his command. And he has this radical moment with Jesus on uh, what the Bible calls the road to Damascus. He was traveling to persecute the church, and he has this radical encounter. His life is changed and transformed. The apostle Paul went on to do great things and wrote the majority of uh, the New Testament. And so the, the book of Romans, the letter really of Romans, is written by this man, the apostle Paul. And there is a crucial statement in Romans chapter 12 that I believe every Christian should um, look at, understand, memorize, if you will, uh, because it is so important uh, for your growth as a follower of Christ. And so we're gonna look at these two verses today and we're gonna dissect them a little bit. But Romans chapter 12, uh, starting in verse one and two. The Apostle Paul says, so dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you, to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Verse two, which is extremely crucial. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you, if you're taking notes or you want to highlight or circle something in your Bible, circle that, underline it, transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Heavenly Father, this morning, Speak to us. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. As the word of God goes forth, as we dive into what it means to be changed and transformed 
by you. Speak to us. Convict us. Do something deep within our heart and our mind. Challenge us this morning to be who you've created us to be. We love you. We give you this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We got anybody that is from the 60s? Just raise your hand. Be proud of being a little bit older. Come on. I was not from the 60s. I didn't come around until the 80s. But there was a show that launched in the 60s that probably the majority of people, to some extent, in this room are uh, familiar with because this show in title has lived on for decades and decades. Star Trek. Got any Trekkies in the house? Now listen, I wasn't a Trekkie because this was before my era, but I remember my dad talking about Star Trek and I remember watching these old episodes of Star Trek with Captain Kirk and the Enterprise and these journeys through space and Young people, you should, that actually is so crazy. We, we got a new TV and we, we set it up and the like main thing that came up is this animated Star Trek series that's out now. So maybe young people know about Star Trek. I don't know. But basically, Captain Kurt and the crew, they would go on these adventures and they would explore galaxies and they would visit different planets and whenever they were needing to get back onto the Starship Enterprise, Captain Kurt had this engineer named Scotty. Many of you know what he would say. What would he say? Beam me up, Scotty. If he needed to get from the random planet he was exploring back onto the spaceship, beam me up, Scotty. And (laughs) he was there back on the spaceship. Now, I hate to burst some of your bubbles, but the term beam me up, Scotty, was actually never used in the show. Did you know that? Captain Kirk never once said, beam me up, Scotty. He said, beam me up. He said, Scotty, beam me up. But he never, somewhere in the 70s, I guess this thing took off and it was more associated with drugs than anything else, but... (laughs) The message of today's title is God's name ain't Scotty. God's name ain't Scotty. Listen, wouldn't it be amazing if we all had a Scotty? We we could just say where we're currently at, Scotty, I want to go from here to there and instantaneously we would go from where we're at to where we want to be. Wouldn't it be incredible to say, here's the season of life I'm in. Here's the valley I'm in. Here's the mountaintop I'm in. Here's the relationship I'm in. Here's the job that I'm in. And you know what? I don't want to be here. I want to be over there. So Scotty, give me there. It'd be incredible. You know, that's oftentimes how we view God as Scotty. Scotty, I want you, God, to just get me from here to there. Here's the thing about God, though. God is not into teleporting people. He's into transforming people. God's name ain't Scotty. Listen, we want this teleportation Christianity. We want to instantaneously go from where we are to where we want to be, and we want God to do it all. But the reality is God is not into just taking you to where you want to be. He's into taking you to where he wants you to be and who he wants you to be. And here's the thing about transformation. It takes a lot of time. It is a process. You see, The truth is the plan and purpose that God has for your life, and there is one, there is a plan and purpose for your life. 
But that plan and purpose that God has for your life, for my life, it is not going to unfold magically. It's not going to unfold magically. It's not just going to happen instantaneously. What God wants to do in our lives, as Romans talked about, is to transform us into new people. See, here's the thing. If you don't become who God wants you to be, you'll never get to where God wants to take you. You see, the journey of following Jesus isn't so much about reaching X marks the spot. Listen, X marks the spot is heaven. We're all going to get there someday if we have put our faith in Jesus. That's the ultimate destination. What is the purpose of this life, though? It's to become more like Jesus along the journey. It is to be changed and transformed, as the Bible says, from one degree of glory to the next. It's not about where you want to get vocationally. It's not about where you want to get financially. It's not really even about where you want to get relationally, even though those are all great things. I think we should have goals for all of those areas of our lives. I think those are important, but they're not the primary destination of our lives. Listen, you can become, right, anything that you want to be. How many of you heard that growing up? You can be anything that you want to be. Anything you want to be. True and false. You can't be a 6'8 basketball player if God didn't bless you to be a 6'8 basketball player. So there are physical limitations and things that you can't be. But for the most part, when it comes to a journey, when it comes to a destination, if you are willing to work hard, if you're willing to sacrifice, if you're willing to just put in the time, the effort, all of that, you can pretty much get to where you want to be. You can become a business owner. You can become a CEO. You can become a, a mom or dad. You can do all of the things if you put the work, the time, the energy, the effort into it. Destination X, this whole series, this destiny that we're talking about is not about those things that we can work to become. It's about being transformed into who God wants us to be. Because at the end of the day, you can climb the ladder, you can get to whatever this is that you want to get to, and it might be good, but if you haven't become more like Jesus, you have missed the purpose of what it means to be a Christian. You've missed it. And so my encouragement to you today is to allow God, as Romans says, to change the way that you think. Because if you don't change the way that you think, you will not be transformed into who God wants you to be. Allow God to change the way you think. Then what does it say? So that you can be transformed into a new person. Then it's only when you've experienced transformation that you will know the plan and purpose that God has for your life. One of the resources I mentioned, The Imitations of Christ, the monk Thomas Kempis, who wrote this years and years ago, late 1300s, early 1400s, he said this, there are many people who frequently hear the words of Christ, but have little desire to follow them and do not have the mind of Christ. If we want to be transformed, we got to have the mind of Christ. In other words, we have to learn to think the way Jesus thinks. I want to define Christianity for you. Being a Christian, being a follower of Christ has one goal in mind, to become more like Jesus in thought and in action. It's not to become a pastor. <laughs> Please don't try to become a pastor unless you are absolutely called to it. It's not about becoming a pastor. This isn't the, the, the um, mountaintop of Christianity, trust me. That's not the goal. The goal isn't to become an influencer. 
and leverage your platforms to be an influence for Jesus. The goal of Christianity is to just become more like Jesus. And the more you become like Jesus, listen, this is so crucial to your growth. All the dreams, all the aspirations you have for this year, listen, you can have an amazing year if you become more like Jesus. That's the goal of Christianity. That's the X marks the spot. That's what we're aiming for. That's what we're striving for. It's not to be great. It's to be like Jesus. And whatever comes along with that. You know, there's a lot of talk in our culture about discovering your truth. Finding your way. Living your life. Right? It is the predominant thought and idea of our culture. You do you. You be you. Live your truth. What's good for you is good for you. What's good for me is good for me. That is the predominant temperature of our culture, at least here where we live. You got to find who it is that you are. You got to do what works for you. And we have bought into this idea that what we feel is what is right. And I know that we've got different people here today from all different walks of life. I know we've got people tuning in online or who will see this later. Listen, if you are a Christian, a Christian, so if you, if you claim Jesus as your savior, you are a follower of Christ, right? Christianity is the religion that you identify with. So if you claim Christ, that makes you a Christian. If in faith you believe that Jesus is the son of God, that he died on a cross, that three days later he rose again, he ascended back to heaven and that he's coming back, that is the gospel. If you believe those things and you are a Christian, Listen, you don't have a truth. You don't have a way. You don't have a life. Because Jesus says in John 14, 6, I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. And so unless you are willing to abandon yourself, follow my way, my truth, my life, you're never going to become who I have destined you to become. So as a Christian, listen, this is so important. You have got to take that thought of my truth, my way, my life, and throw it out the window and say, I have died, as Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And so I will follow Jesus' way. I will follow his truth. I will follow his life because ultimately, no matter what it costs me, I will become who he wants me to become and I will get to where he wants me to get. First John chapter one, six tells us those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. You don't have God in your life unless you are following Jesus. And one of the biggest reasons followers of Christ, listen, and I'm, I'm, I'm preaching this because I want the best for you. Like I hope, I hope my tone, I hope my tenor, I hope what you get out of this is not like, dang, he was coming down on us. I'm coming down on you because I want what's best for you. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing would make me happier as a pastor to see every single person that calls Trademark Church home absolutely thrive in their relationship with Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. To where email and text and connection cards are filled out saying, this is what God has done in my life. And so I have a responsibility to preach truth to you because I want this journey of following Jesus. I'm not, I'm not going to sell you that it's going to be easy and I'm not going to sell you that it's all just going to be glory and good. It's going to be hard and there's going to be obstacles and there's going to be trials. But listen, what you will experience in your relationship with Jesus will radically change and transform you if you allow him to. 
One of the biggest reasons followers of Christ are not discovering the purpose for their life is that they are processing their decisions emotionally, not scripturally. Now, what I'm about to talk about is not popular at all. There's a whole lot of feel good messages you can go get to that are gonna give you goosebumps, make you wanna stand to your feet, clap, hoop and holler. 2022 is my year. But listen, if you do not begin to learn to make decisions in this life based on scripture and not your emotions, you are not going to enjoy this journey of following Jesus and you will be sadly disappointed over and over and over again. Listen, this idea of if I feel it, it must be true or right is dangerous because your feelings are determined by your thinking. And listen, if you don't have the right thoughts, if you don't have the thoughts of God, your thinking will determine your feeling and your feeling will determine your living. You should write this down. The way you think determines the way you feel and the way you feel determines the way that you live. When the Bible talks about the heart, that's why it's funny when we tell people to pray Jesus into their heart. We're not, we, we, we've created this idea that we're asking Jesus to be a part of something emotionally. Yeah. Christianity, historically, when you really study it, has very little to do with emotion. I've heard one scholar say that Christianity is the most thinking man's religion because God is not calling people to make an emotional decision. He's calling them to make a rational decision of faith. I am choosing, not based on how I feel, I am choosing to become a Christian and follow the way of Christ because I believe in faith, it is true. We've created this idea that if I feel it, it must be right, and then if I don't feel it, then maybe I don't have God's presence. And we've created this culture within Christianity that is so based on emotions that we ride this roller coaster of a journey. And so I'm hoping today that this will, this will free you up a little bit. And I want you to write this down. It'll come up on the screen. You can take a picture of it, whatever you need to do to remember it. Because again, we're not just talking about a destiny. We're talking about your divine destiny. We're talking about, again, who God wants you to become and where God ultimately wants to take you. But your divine destiny is tied to your ability to process life's decisions, not emotionally, but scripturally. To be changed into a new person by changing the way that you think, it's then and only then that you will be able to know God's will for your life, which is good and pleasing. This is why Romans chapter one and two is so important. You cannot worship God in the way that God wants you to worship him, which is pleasing, Romans chapter one, right? Give all of who you are, the totality of your life, following Jesus' way, his truth, his life, the totality, that is the good and pleasing way to worship God. But you cannot begin to worship God correctly unless you think the way God wants you to think. You have to allow him to transform you again into a new person, not by changing the way you feel, but changing the way that you think. If you approach your relationship with Jesus based on how you feel, your relationship will ebb and flow based on all the circumstances that are going on around you. Somebody cut you off, somebody flipped you off, your boss was harsh with you at work, you will process everything from an emotional standpoint. We have to learn to have the mind of Christ. We have to know truth. It is the number one determining factor of whether or not you will see the plans and purpose that God has for your life unfold on this journey. It doesn't unfold based on your feelings. 
It unfolds based on your ability to process life's decisions scripturally. So listen, I'm, I'm dumbfounded as a pastor that there are so many Christians that want what God has for them but refuse to live by what he's written to them. I want God. Again, 2022 is my year. 2020 was all of our year, but we know what happened there. 2021 has been a year of recovery, licking our wounds and trying to figure out life again. This year, there's great expectation. Many people have given me a word. Many people have uh, uh, posted in chat like, I believe that there are great things this year. I do in the core of my being, I do. But listen, if we're not going to be people that are willing to follow the map for life that God has given us, to be able to say, okay, relationally, I want 2022 to be the best year of my life. Okay, if you do, what does it say scripturally about relationships? Financially, I wanna thrive. I wanna see my business boom. I wanna be more generous than I've ever been. But you don't tithe? What's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. How many times have you started a new year saying, this is my year, I'm gonna grow, God's gonna do great things, I'm gonna see my miracle, I'm gonna have the favor of God upon my life, great, but then you don't live your life according to scripture and you expect something to change. It is not until the people of God begin to understand that this is what we need to determine the steps of our life. Your word is a light to my path, a lamp to my feet. And until we get back to the fundamental basics of knowing scripture, don't expect God to move. Don't expect God to move. Don't let your Christianity be wrapped up. We're going to talk about this more next week. There's four types of Christians. There's four types of people, really. I'll give you a snippet. Most people right now are getting their theology and their thinking from a social media clip not from scripture itself. So listen, this journey of life is about making decisions. 40 years old, I've lived a little bit, not as many years as the people from the 60s, but I feel like I've learned some things. And I would venture to say that those that are from the Star Trek generation would say that they've learned some things too. And that when you look back in time, you see all of the decisions you should have made. All of the decisions you could have made. And hopefully we've learned over time how to make the right decisions. Listen, life is about making decisions. And here's this thing, when you make decisions, those decisions are either bringing you closer to where God wants you or further away. One of the other resources that I mentioned, the book Live No Lies by John Mark Comer, he says this, you become what you give your mind to. The key is not just to think about scripture, it's to think scripture. It's not just to think about the words of God, it's to think the words of God. It's our responsibility, this is crucial, it is our responsibility to curate our thought life. I can tell you this, you are not going to be miraculously sanctified. You will, salvation is a miraculous thing. When someone chooses to put their faith in Jesus, that is what we call salvation. Sins forgiven. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died on a cross, rose three days later. I believe he's coming back, right? Salvation is tied up into your faith in who Jesus is. It is instantaneous. When you put your faith in Jesus, your name goes into the book of life. On the other side of this life, there is an eternity awaiting us. But the journey of this life is about becoming more like Jesus. We call that in the church sanctification. Sanctification is a process that does not happen miraculously in and of itself. 
It's not teleporting. It's transformation. And in your transformation, there is a personal responsibility as a follower of Christ to curate your thought life. Too often we want to pray away our problems, but the problems were self-inflicted. We want God to come and rescue us from bad decision-making. And it's not to say that he won't, and it's not to say that he shows up because God is good and he is gracious, and every time he shows up in one of our bad decision moments and rescues us, you know what it's for? To say, listen, learn. Create something new within your mind so that the next time you realize, because if our life is just mistake after mistake after mistake and no growth and no effort to become who God wants us to become, what will happen is the Bible says later in Romans that God will abandon people to their sin. We want to say that God is a God of unlimited chances. False. There is, biblically speaking, a limit to what God will do with people. Because every time you make the wrong decision, it becomes a habit. And when your habit of lifestyle is to live counter to the things of God, God will take his hand of grace off of you. So again, listen, I'm preaching heavy truth because heavy truth isn't preached enough. And we've got so many Christians just limping through life wondering, I was promised the good life. I was promised grace and favor and prosperity and all of this stuff that comes along with some of these promises that we get preached about. The fundamental truth is, listen, abide in scripture because, listen, I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, but here's something about the Holy Spirit. You get a word, you get a thought, you get a direction, you get a feeling. If it doesn't align with scripture, it's not the Holy Spirit. God does not contradict himself. The Holy Spirit will never whisper something in your ear, give you chills or a goosebump feeling that doesn't align with scripture. God told me to date that person or whatever. Woo, I got those feelings. That ain't feelings, that's hormones. That's not bad, God gave you hormones. Traction's a good thing. But if he or she isn't living for God, if they're not involved in their church, if they're not serving, if they're not passionately pursuing their creator, listen, that ain't the Holy Spirit. That's something else. Now, something else may be fun for a little while, but that's something else will mess you up. And you can apply that to anything else in your life. Man, I'm gonna run out of time. All right. We're going to rip through this because we've got some points we've got to make. So listen, if we want to have the mind of Christ, if we want to make the decisions that are going to get us closer to the destination that God has for us, there's some things that we've got to do. Let's get to the application. Let's get to the practical part of this, the part that you are responsible for. First thing we've got to do is we've got to make Scripture our authority. Make, man, we hate the word authority in our culture these days. Make scripture our authority. Colossians 2.8 says, don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high sounding nonsense. And there is a whole lot of that out there right now. Empty philosophies and high sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. For the Christian We don't get caught up in every new idea. We don't get caught up in every popular cultural thing, philosophy or theory. We get caught up in the mind of Christ, the things of God, the Bible. Make scripture your authority. It helps in your decision making. I'm gonna say some unpopular things. Where do we stand on marriage as a church, not on what the world says, on what scripture says. God is the creator of marriage. I don't care what the state or the government decides legally. I have no dog in that fight. But when it comes to the church, what has God said? I have created marriage, a covenant relationship between man and woman. God created it. 
It is the authority of scripture. So we live and abide by that. This is freeing for me because it's not my thought. It's not my feeling. It's not my opinion. It's not the swaying of culture that determines where we go as a church or where I go as a follower of Christ. It is the authority of scripture. This is what I stand upon. So if you've got an issue, don't take it up with me. Take it up with God. This is my choice. We're big on choice. I choose to make scripture my authority. Get back to dating young people. What does the Bible say about it? It's not about swiping left or right. It's not about this or that. It's about what the Bible says. I stake my decisions on the authority of scripture. Listen, you have to make scripture your authority. Listen to what 2 Timothy says, 3, 16 through 17. It says, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Sounds like destiny. The purpose of scripture is to teach you what is wrong and to teach you what is right. So on this journey of life, it will prepare you for the things that God has prepared for you. Isaiah 40 verse eight says, the grass grass withers and flowers fade. The things of this world go away. But the word of God stands forever. Make scripture your authority. Second thing we've got to do is we've got to meditate on scripture. We've got to make a conscious decision to say, I am going to live my life by scripture. It is my authority. Then we've got to make a decision to meditate on scripture. What does the word meditate mean? It means to engage in contemplation or reflection. In other words, spend time thinking about scripture, asking questions about scripture, praying scripture. Joshua 1.8 says, study this book of, ins- of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Only then will you get to the place that I have designed for you. Meditate on scripture day and night. Make sure that you follow what scripture says. It's then and only then that you will get to the place that I've called you to. Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord, the word of the Lord meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never, never wither, they, and they prosper in all they do. Psalm 143.5, and I could go on and on. I remember the days of old. I ponder all your great works and think about what you have done. We've got to make Scripture our authority. We've got to meditate on Scripture. And lastly, what I want you to write down We've got to memorize scripture. We've got to memorize scripture. It is, has to be ingrained in the pathways of our mind that when situations and scenarios pop up, scripture is right there with them. This is how Jesus combated the attack of the enemy with scripture. Perfectly on his mind. The devil said this. He said, no, 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 but scripture says this. The world says this, do this, live this way, think that way. No, no, no. Scripture says this, and we recall it to our mind. One of the goals that Brittany and I have this year is we we are memorizing together a proverb every week. Proverb this week, Proverbs 1, 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools, fools despise wisdom and instruction. Setting scripture to mind. You don't know when you'll need it, but you will need it. And every time you make a scriptural decision for your life, you are taking a step closer to the divine destiny of your life. Yeah. Memorize scripture. Psalm 119, 11 says, I've hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. 
I've hidden your word in my heart. I know it so that why? So that I can get ahead, so that I can be a better person, so that I can clout how much I know. No, so that I want to sin against you, God. That I won't trespass on the divine destination that you have for my life. Psalm 119, 13 says, I have recited aloud all the regulations you have given us. I've recited it aloud. Read all of Psalm 119, talking about the importance of scripture. Psalm 119, 60 says, I will hurry without delay to obey your commands. So listen, all of this is so crucially important in uh, I want you to understand the effects of what making scripture your authority, meditating on scripture, memorizing scripture will do in your life. And so we've got a short little video that I want you to watch right now. There was a recent study by the Center for Bible Engagement where they pulled 40,000 uh, uh, general population in the U.S. from eight to 80, and they just wanted to see how we are engaging with scripture. Right. And they discovered something that actually became kind of the profound discovery of the entire study. It, they weren't even looking for this, and this is kind of became the highlight of the study. Right. Um, when we're in the scripture one time a week, and that could be church on Sunday, that's pastor saying you open your Bible, we hear the message, one time a week had negligible effect on some key areas of your life. So I'll, I'm gonna spell that out more here in a moment. Two times a week, negligible effect. Now at three times a week, there was a blip on the map, like there was a heartbeat. Something happened, again, a heartbeat. Okay. But here was the profound discovery. When we're in the scripture four times a week, it literally spikes off the chart. You would expect that it'd be one, two, th I mean, there'd be a gradual incline right. on the effect and impact that would have in your life, but it was literally one, two, three, four, something radically happens. Okay, you got my curiosity. To this what, extent. What kind of behavior is being affected? Feeling lonely drops 30%. Wow. Ang four times a week in the four Bible. Four times a week in the Bible. Okay. Anger issues drop 32%. Uh, bitterness in relationships, marriage, a relationship with your kids, and so on, drops 40%. Alcoholism drops 57%. Feeling spiritually stagnant. You know, if there was one area when I'm talking with people that, that they'll be honest about is they just feel spiritually stagnant. Ask them the question, how much time are you spending in the scripture? If they're in the scripture four times a week or more, it drops 60%. Wow. Viewing pornography drops 61%. That's very important. Now, on a flip positive side, sharing your faith wow. jumps 200%. Wow. Because you have a confidence in God's word. And then discipling others jumps 230%. Listen, church, would you stand with me for just a moment? This is the living, breathing word of God. It is the truth for your life. This book right here is not something that you read, but it reads you. It's something that will help change and transform your life. And so listen, I wanna pray a prayer of blessing over your life before you leave today. That in 2022, no matter what happens, no matter what goals are achieved, no matter goals fall short, no matter what situations or circumstance show up in your life, that you would stand on the authority of God that you would learn to meditate on his word, to memorize his word, so that you can become more like Jesus. God, this morning over this entire church, every single person, God, no matter where their heart is at, no matter where their mind is at right now, no matter what they're thinking about, all that has been discussed today, God, I just pray that the favor of your Holy Spirit would come, that there would be deep conviction that this is not just a book that we sit on a shelf or bring with us to church on Sunday, but this is the map that in this book, the X for every decision of our life is here. The wisdom for making choices is here. The wisdom for relationships is here. That this, the living, breathing word of God is what so many of us need changed and transformed, to have our mind renewed so that we can become more like Jesus. 
God, may this year we not look with anticipation just to where we want to get to, but to where you want to take us. May we look with anticipation, God, for how you're going to change and transform us to become more like Jesus. God, I pray that as everyone leaves today, as they walk out of this place, that God, there would be a deep felt conviction to get into your word, to make it a priority in our lives, to stand upon it as our authority, to start somewhere. Maybe it's a verse, maybe it's a chapter, maybe it's a morning time reading, maybe it's evening time reading. It's gonna look different for everybody, but to just get into your word and make 2022 a year that because we dove into your word, we've allowed you to speak to us through it, that we will be utterly stirred to be who you've called us to be. We love you. We praise you.